What's going on everybody? Doc here again from Average Gamer Guys and welcome to another Halo Wars 2 video. Uh, we're going to be jumping into a 2v2 deck guide. Um, we've had some success over the last uh, day or so playing uh, with these two setups. Um, and I'm going to just give you some tips and uh, basic deck builds. Uh, one for UNSC and one for the Covenant uh, that you can pair up, uh, do standard matches with you and a buddy. And uh, again, hopefully you'll have the same success I've been having. Now, obviously, uh, decks are going to be kind of dependent on the cards you get. Um, so we'll kind of try to keep it basic uh, to most of the things. Obviously, if you have some of the legendary cards, um, you can make some swap-ins, ones, uh, ones and twos here and there. Um, but for the most part, I think these should be accessible for just about everybody as soon as you jump into the game. Uh, and again, picking up those packs is relatively easy. I'm actually going to do a quick pack opening uh, with you right here. I got 11, uh, really just from running the daily and weekly challenges, which I've completed all for today, um, and also just leveling up. I think I'm currently level 5. So let's jump into the pack opening real quick, and then we'll hop over to the deck. Got 11 of these to go through, so hopefully we get some good stuff. Back to... Super Hornet, pretty cool. Going up that back class. And Grunt Mob got a new card there. Neat. Warhog leveling that up. It's always good. Play some skill. Use the card for us there. Ghost leveled up, which is actually going to come in pretty quick. We'll see here as we get going. Enduring Blister back. Nice. And go find another new card. Make some good progress. Again, uh, these packs are pretty easy to pick up. Uh, like I said, just playing the game, getting into online matches. The tutorial gives you one off the bat, and then just leveling up as well. Um, the daily challenges are great. They give a lot of experience. Ooh, nice. Assault Elite. Cool. Um, they give great experience, so it's pretty easy to get through a couple ranks and uh, actually make some good progress in here. Always good to see cards leveling up. Prowling Marauder, probably one of my favorite cards, actually. Stuff here as we kind of pick through. I think prior to this, I only opened up about five packs or so. Uh, you get a couple right off the bat, like I said. Use four Armored Warthog. That's sweet. Still haven't seen a legendary card, um, which obviously makes sense. The highest rarity. Hopefully, we'll looking be able to pick something up here. On Broderick, awesome. There we go, and just as I say it, pretty cool. Got the Warlord. Try him out in another video. Five more packs to go. Wolverine, great anti-air card. Self Kodiak. This is actually something I was also hoping, uh, hoping for. Uh, the cloak ability on that thing is going to be awesome. The fact that you can set it up um, kind of just outside of a point and shoot it from range is actually really, really neat. Really beneficial once you've kind of locked down a point. Good level up here. And there we go. The Scarab Assault. Another card there. Cool. Leveled up. Some good luck here with two legendaries already. Blood Fuel Locust. New card for us. Arc Defense. Uh, this will actually be something else that we play in. Oh man, look at this. Three legendaries. Boom, boom, boom. That's pretty cool. having some really good luck so hopefully if you guys are opening packs hopefully you guys are getting the same amount of luck i am uh the last couple packs have been pretty good as far as picking up here poking field nice or max last nice final one that will jump in. Cool. What do we got? Blood fuel grunts. So 
also good good mix 11 pack like i said pretty easy to get once you kind of get into it and get playing um, but right now so we're gonna head over to the decks so obviously if you're just jumping into the beta and you haven't played a whole lot um, you have the choice of captain cutter isabel and professor anders um, they're all a little bit different they they do have some specifics as far as what cards each of them can use but the majority of the cards um, are available to each of the respective UNSC leaders. Personally, if you're going to be running a 2v2 match, I have been playing as Professor Anders. Partly because of some of the cards that she has, but mostly because, as you can see right under the word tactician, you see starting army. She starts with one of the highest amount of starting units as far as an army is concerned. And why that's important uh, is because you can actually split a Cyclops and a Marine off um, to go grab an energy core right at the beginning and then also still send a Cyclops, a Marine, and the Wolverine uh, to go capture a point, which that's pretty formidable force um, that can grab a point pretty early and actually do okay at holding it against the majority of the other leaders. Um, and you'll see as you kind of start to jump into the game, or if you've been playing it a little bit, a lot of times within the first 30 seconds or so of a match, you're getting an energy to spawn in. Um, so having those extra couple of units to be able to go grab the energy and be able to go capture a point, uh, I, I think is one of the, probably the biggest benefits uh, specifically for using her. So we'll jump over and make a, a deck from scratch and just kind of talk through a few of the keys. Energy, uh, I think, and the ability to get it quickly uh, really is a huge finding strategy for this Blitz mode. Um, obviously, having good cards and having cards leveled up and good units uh, is important, and being able to hold points is important. Uh, but if you can outpace the energy grab at the beginning of the game um, from your opponent, especially in a 2v2 match uh, where the energy consumption is shared. So if your partner grabs energy, you see the boost as well. Um, that's just huge. So we're going to try to set this deck up um, so that both players have the capability to go grab energy at the beginning. Professor uh, Anders here doesn't need as much help again because she starts with so many units. Cyclops and Marines are very capable of going uh, and grabbing energy cores. Um, so we will use the Jackrabbit good fast uh, unit to go out there. And I'm a, personally a fan of Anders as well uh, because she has such a diverse group of cards that she can use it because of the Sentinels. Um, you'll see a lot, uh, both the Covenant and the UNSC have good anti-air, but typically it's only about one, maybe two units uh, that are specifically really strong against air. And that kind of gives Professor Anders another leg up. Um, so you can kind of tailor it that way. So I'll run the Jackrabbit, the Aggressor Sentinel. Cyclops is a great just unit, uh, starting unit. Got to run the Wolverine uh, just for the anti-air capability. Become a big fan of the Nightingale uh, because the cloak ability, specifically with the Covenant, which it seems a lot of people like to play, um, the ability to break that down, detect, uh, specifically their prowlers, uh, which have the capability to really destroy air units fast, I think makes the Nightingale uh, key here. Hopping over, big fan of the Warthog, another great, pretty tough unit that can really move around the battlefield fast. Protector Sentinel, um, in my opinion, one of the better air units. Um, Kodiak. Kodiak, as I mentioned, kind of as we were rolling through the pack, the ability to set this uh, card up once you drop it in, once you have a point, and have it overwatch while it's outside of the point, this thing deals some pretty serious damage. Um, it is a little susceptible, obviously, if they kind of flank around it. and It is kind of hard to get it up and get it moved because uh, it is a slower unit. Uh, but once you're kind of set in, you've got a point, and you're able to hold it for a little while, Setting in one or two of these is going to give you a huge advantage. Um, I like having a Scorpion tough unit. I'm also a big fan. Uh, I run a little bit more unit uh, than than kind of power heavy, um, but one of the one of the better, in my opinion, uh, powers 
and this is specific to Anders, is the arc defense, uh, which lets you call in a in a ring up to 12 sentinels to attack uh, up to 12 different enemies. So if they're bringing in a mass force to try to push you off of a point, you know, maybe kind of later in the game, this thing is going to drop in a lot of units um, and do a good amount of damage, as well as kind of keep your units safe uh, because they will kind of start taking the brunt of the majority of the damage that's coming through. So I always like to run that. And then the Vulture. Now I've kind of got one extra slot uh, that I'll throw around here. Not a big fan of the Counter Strike. Uh, it is a great card. 300 energy is a lot. Obviously, you're still trying to outpace uh, your your opponent, and that is really the key, uh, I think, to winning this game outside, of obviously, of holding the points. Uh, but if you can outpace the energy, I still think, in my opinion, 300 is a little hefty uh, for what it does. So this kind of leaves up the option, whatever you uh, prefer. My uh, two recommendations would either be the Hornet, another great air unit, or if you have uh, have been able to pick up in the packs armored marines, and that's what I'm going to put in here. Um, the ability to guard, the fact that they take a lot of damage, uh, is pretty nice. And then they're a great unit. They can really mow down an energy core single by themselves. Run in, grab them quick. Um, so, and again, guard's a great ability because if you got them dropped in there, they're going to soak up initial damage. They're going to let your Kodiaks, your Scorpions. Uh, Kind of really plug through so just again you can see on the left hand side there uh just how we're setting up the deck We've got a pretty good uh mix of cards a lot of you know some stuff in the low 40s which you'll gain 40 energy pretty quick uh, a little bit heavier on the air side like i said i think again that's one of the reasons i like using professor anders and again if you don't have armored marines throw that hornet in uh and you're i think honestly you're going to be really good to go i've used this deck 1v1s 2v2s uh, and it's performed pretty awesome for me again the fact that you can grab energy and be grabbing a point simultaneously at the beginning of a game without having to worry about uh, the units that you grab that point with uh, being too susceptible because you have a uh, an ideal situation of cyclops a marine and, and the wolverine sitting there uh, you, you should be pretty well set and kind of uh, take that initial first uh, first leap uh, over the energy uh, from your opponent. So that's kind of how I'm setting that up. And if you have any suggestions or uh, anything else you recommend uh, dropping in instead of something I put in, feel free to leave it in the comments. Let me know. Um, and let me know again if you guys got other deck ideas, something else you want to set up. Maybe maybe you have a really stellar deck with Cutter um, and you've just been really doing some work with it. Throw it down in the comments. We will hop over now. Uh, again to the Covenant side um, again you got the three options we're going to just go right to the Shipmaster uh, and I'll show you why here as we jump in again the capability to grab energy I can't harp on that enough uh, really can be the difference in this game mode uh, with getting the edge over your opponent uh, to be honest I've even seen a lot of strategies talking about don't even worry about grabbing points uh, initially and worry about grabbing the energy i won't go as far as to say that but i will say if you have the capability to split your units then units to grab a point um, and then units to grab energy and then as you kind of progress through the game you're dropping down just single units in the energy spawn spots that way as soon as it comes in they can destroy it they're standing there and they can grab it um, that's kind of the ideal situation you want to be in that way you can really ramp up uh, your energy production over the course of the game. The reason we picked the Shipmaster here uh, specifically is because he has the capability to not only get the Chopper, which we're going to throw in, but also the Ghost. Uh, ghost is specific to the Shipmaster. These two fast units and the fact that he gets three Ghosts at the beginning, uh, again, another perfect situation where you can send two Ghosts to go grab a point, another Ghost, run over, grab energy, uh, and between you and uh, you know your buddy playing with you uh, that's running Anders, there's no reason you won't grab the first, if not both, of the energies uh, that spawn in on that first uh, initial shot. Um, again, just giving you that huge advantage. Um, I'm a big fan of the Elite Rangers. I think they're a great uh, small unit to bring in. Pretty hefty. Uh, they do some pretty good damage. 
And then I love running the Hunters and Ironclad Hunters. So we're going to be throwing those in. Hunters deal incredible damage uh, to ground-based vehicles. Uh, it, it is absolutely crazy. A pair of these uh, together uh, can mow down quite a few different units, uh, both UNSC and Covenant side. So I absolutely recommend having those in there. Um, again, Assault Elites, you might be able to swap in for uh, Elite Rangers um, if you have them. If you don't, don't worry about it. Stick with the Elite Rangers. Engineer, again, we talked kind of with uh, Anders, the ability to detect. Uh, that's pretty huge. Uh, Engineer is great, specifically for the Covenant units. A lot of the higher ones have pretty good health and the fact that they have a shield. Um, and the Engineer just floats above. Uh, doesn't really get targeted too much. Um, which is also nice and actually provides some pretty good healing. Uh, so highly recommend that as the support side. Um, Banshee, we'll throw it in here for now. Uh, pretty good base unit at 60. That's a pretty good cost too. Broader, uh, great ground base uh, unit. Deals out quite a bit of damage specific to infantry, but also handles itself uh, against uh, vehicles as well. Prowling Reaver. Uh, this is probably one of the best anti-air units in the game uh, simply for the fact of it can cloak. And the fact that it can cloak, it, uh, I mean, I've been in matches where people have had this and I haven't had a unit that can detect it. And it will absolutely obliterate uh, your air units without you even realizing it. Um, and the fact that this detect is actually also you know, kind of a double threat for you. Uh, so you can drop it in. Great to work with uh, some of the other units. Specifically, if you're going to run the Banshee here. Um, Blasting Beam, again, I'm personally not a huge fan of the spells, but this direct plasma beam uh, takes down quite a bit of units and does quite a bit of damage. Uh, specifically for Vultures, Vultures seem to be uh, one of the top tier uh, units, as they should be in the game. Um, and they can uh, be pretty pesky because of the. the large amount of health they have and the fact that they can shoot uh, their missile barrage which is very devastating um, so this is a great kind of counter to that or counter to big big pushes um, if you're kind of setting up a defense on a point you see a large army rolling in cue this thing up start blasting you're going to take a lot of health away from a lot of your opponent's uh, units gotta have the ray tank uh, again the fact that it has a shield good damage a little bit slower on the fire rate, uh, but it can take a little bit of a punishment to pop back there. The blister back, great air unit. Um, great, great air unit. I will say it's probably a little less efficient um, than the Vulture, which makes sense. It's about, uh, it is 20 energy uh, less than the Vulture, uh, but great support unit uh, to kind of float up above the rest of your ground units. Um, and it, it has a missile shot, too, that uh, does a pretty good amount of damage. So definitely recommend that. Um, and then this Pawling Marauder, again, this kind of last empty slot is uh, kind of your choice, but I'll give you some recommendations here. Pawling Marauder is going to be one that I'm going to use, again, because of the cloak ability. Um, cloak ability, again, I've seen these things drive in. Uh, the fact that this does a good amount of damage uh, just from the base unit, uh, obviously, you have the 1 for 70 energy already in there, um, but I, I cannot stress enough cloak and the fact that if your opponent doesn't have a detect unit, this thing is staying cloaked and it is dealing some pretty serious damage. And sometimes people don't even realize it. You could send this unit in by yourself uh, to go kind of just sneak around and grab in on a point, and I mean, it'll just start chipping damage away and destroying units before your opponents even notice. Um, so great unit there. So that's what I'm going to throw in there. If you don't have that, again, say you haven't opened up a lot of packs or you're just jumping in, um, you can sub in uh, another Reaver. Uh, it, that's not a terrible idea. Again, uh, air units can be pretty prevalent, and if you don't have a good capability to take them down, uh, ground units that aren't air specific sometimes have a tough time. Um, so having something that can really shoot out a lot of missiles, again, I think the Reaver, in my opinion, is probably one of the best units at taking down uh, air units in the game. Um, and if you don't want to go uh, that side, uh, really you can throw in any of the smaller. I would stay away from the Locust. Um, I've seen people using it. It does have an extremely long range of fire. 
uh, and it is a steady source of damage. Locust in this game, though, is specific for building. Uh, this would be a great uh, unit to grab energy, but at this point you already have the chopper, you already have the ghost, and you're bringing three ghosts in uh, for your starting army. Um, so, again, personal opinion, I would kind of leave that one to the side. So that's how I'd set it up. Chopper, Elite Rangers, the Ghost Hunters, Engineer, Banshee, Marauders, uh, Prowling Reavers, Slicing Beam being that one spell, Wraith, Blisterback, and again, if you got it, the Prowling Marauder, uh, or Again, another Reaver, uh, if you think you're going to be facing a lot of air units. Uh, so this kind of wraps it up. Um, again, we, I've had a lot of success, uh, you know, me and a buddy running these two decks um, and kind of getting through the matches. Honestly, getting some pretty easy wins, uh, but mostly because we are grabbing energy so quickly and efficiently at the beginning of the game. Yes, in the first couple minutes, they may take, uh, you know, two points, and they may be uh, grabbing a lot of points just at the beginning. Um, but as soon as you kind of get a small army built up, you'll outpace them so fast uh, because you have that significant energy uh, advantage. So, again, if you guys got any other uh, comments or questions, please feel free to uh, throw them down below. Uh, we got a lot more Halo Wars 2 Blitz Beta content coming out. So please like, uh, like the video if you did. Um, Go ahead, subscribe. Uh, like I said, we're going to be busy this weekend uploading this. Um, probably looking at doing maybe a 1v1 uh, deck build as well as a 3v3. Um, so stay tuned for that. And then we're just going to get into some matches as well and more pack openings too. Um, again, hopefully you guys get as lucky as I did today. I uh, picked up some pretty cool stuff that I'm actually kind of excited to jump into and use. Uh, but yeah, throw your comments down below. Hope you guys liked the video and uh, we will check you guys next time.